uh, it's the standard going second deck. I feel like the main deck has been perfected to the point where you can't really change too much. Uh, all the cards are engine cards, so the only cards that are sort of skeptical are like cards like evenly matched, which you know is usually dictated by like matchups, uh, opponents that you're playing against, and stuff like that. And then you have cards like Droll and Lockbird, which is like also the same sort of premise. Like your opponent's either playing a deck that gets you know beat by Droll and Lockbird. Uh, or it doesn't. <laughs> and then you have cards, of course, like Ghost Reaper and Winter Chariot, which is really good against the mirror match, because uh, whoever resolves it first doesn't get to activate double helix, doesn't get to resolve double helix, and then the matchup becomes like pretty reasonably far in your favor. So uh, yeah, just standard main deck. Uh, I feel like the side deck is probably the, where the innovation comes in. So uh, hopefully that works out. Oh. Uh, the Spiral Mirror Match, I feel, is reasonably skill-based in the sense that a lot of people will tend to pull the trigger uh, aiming to combo in scenarios where they shouldn't be comboing. And it also adds extra dimensions when people are playing cards like Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries where if your opponent commits a monster to the board, then uh, you get to cherries them before anything else happens. So at that point, you're sort of gambling on the fact that my opponent either has this card or they don't. So where it can be uh, a good thing at times to you know like be a bit trigger-happy in that sense but it does lose you the game long term. Um, outside of that, I feel like there is no real uh, exploit to the going second strategy. You can build your deck to go first, but having less cards is obviously like uh, pretty strenuous when a lot of your combos are two card combos, and you also want to stop your opponent from playing when they stop you from playing. So the mirror match, I don't think there's too much you can do with it in game one in the main deck. Uh, with the side deck, again, it's also a guessing game. If your opponent's also playing the go second strategy, they might be picking going first, putting traps in the deck. They might be picking going second and not putting traps in the deck. So you're sort of trying to hedge your bets, and you're putting cards that are good going first and second. That's uh, probably the best approach that I've seen. Um, nothing else has really stood out in testing. So. Spiral versus Trickstar is probably one of my least desirable matchups. Uh, at YCS1, then I had some pretty unfavorable uh, games against Trickstar in the early rounds, which uh, led to my demise at that event. Uh, other than that, I feel like it's just a matchup where that deck has one of the best uh, engines in terms of like going first, because Candine is one card which turns into an, like a card every turn with Lycoris and like reincarnation and stuff like that. So ideally, you want to have Ash Blossom and Joyous Springs in your hand, negates the reincarnation, you get to play the game. Uh, when that doesn't work out, you have to hope that they don't reincarnation uh, all your good cards away. Like that's the the basic premise in that matchup. Uh, outside of that, I don't think there's too much you can main deck for it. Uh, game two and three, you have cards like Chaos Hunter, which is really good. Your opponent can't reincarnation you. They can't banish the reincarnation from Grave, and they can't utilize any of the evenly matched or like any of the cards that banish, obviously, because Chaos Hunter says that. Um, Twin Twisters is really good. Takes a card out of your hand and kills their back row. The back row is usually like the biggest threat in the Trickstar matchup. Uh, their monsters uh, can't really deal with big monsters, and like, they, that's really good. <laughs> they usually can't answer a card like Double Helix with a Last Resort equipped to it. But when people are using cards like Spell Shattering Arrow and uh, but mostly just Spell Shattering Arrow. I feel like that card's very underutilized and it answers a lot of the problems that the deck has against Spiral. So hopefully I don't face people playing that card. Spiral versus Pendulum Magician has been one of the trivial topics in the game at this point because Pendulum Magician has a really strong turn one. The only issue is cards like Evenly Match exist and Evenly Match basically just says, you can make a board, but I'll enter my battle phase and now all your cards are gone and they don't have a monster that will stick to the board after evenly match is resolved, that really poses a threat to the spiral player. So that's, uh, that's definitely a plus side. Outside of that, if the spiral player doesn't see evenly match, it can be an undesirable matchup. Uh, Tornado Dragon and the uh, uh, time, time Graph Trap uh, is just really, really awkward. Uh, just destroys all your monsters, limits your normal summons, which you only have one of, and then cards like Fully Favorable Goods become uh, strictly worse. So I think it's, uh, it's a matchup where you have to usually see evenly match. Post-sideboard, post uh, Magical Spring is really good, though. Uh, it's a card that stops it from playing, and it nets you cards, which is good. So you get closer to see your evenly match, and it uh, mitigates the fact that their cards can't be destroyed, which is uh, pretty pretty good long term. But uh, yeah, obviously, again, uh, against a going first deck that can make a board, you just need the cards to break those boards. 